Let us begin. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is Thursday already, August 13, 2020. Okay. Today we have a very long gospel, so we're not going to read everything about it. Those of you who would go to Mass uh, would have a chance to hear all about it at Mass. And uh, those of you who have missiles can read the whole thing um, from your missiles. Anyway, it's a gospel from St. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21. Oops, sorry. Verses 18, sorry, chapter 18, verse 21. Up, up to chapter 19, verse 1. Okay, what are you looking at, Joe? Okay. This is the question about forgiveness and our Lord giving us um, the uh, parable of the servant who was forgiven uh, from his debt and found a fellow servant who also owed him something and who he did not forgive after himself being forgiven by the king. Okay? So you recall that story? Okay. Okay, so that's the story uh, of uh, the gospel today. So, and it began by Jesus being questioned by his own apostles. and says, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times, the apostles ask. Should I forgive him as many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. 77 times. In some other, in some other uh, gospel translation, it goes 70 times seven times. Okay? Not 77, but 70 times seven. Whichever way the translation goes, uh, only serves to emphasize one thing, and that is the number seven. Okay, the number seven. Why is the number seven significant in this in this story? It's because uh, in in uh, Jewish the Jewish language and custom, the number seven means many. That is the uh, that is the interpretation. That's the that's the significance of the number seven. Okay, it means many. So when the apostles ask, "Should I forgive him many times?" Our Lord answers and says, "No, not many times, but many, 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 many times, almost infinitely, infinitely many." Okay. In other words, our Lord is teaching us to to be forgiving and and be forgiving as as an attitude that um, it is not just a question of being tolerant and forgiving our uh, erring brothers and sisters many times, but it has to be <clears throat> part of our response to anybody who asks for our forgiveness and understanding. Okay? Let us also recall that there is that, <clears throat> that uh, the Jewish law <clears throat> uh, that goes an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, right? It is the, it is the law of revenge, of exacting <clears throat> reparation <clears throat> from, from an offender, of exactly the same things that you were robbed of or you were offended in. Okay? Sophia here is snickering because in the breakfast table here we were just talking about uh, uh, Kamala Harris and the, and the reparation that uh, she demands of uh, government towards black people who were enslaved, uh, <clears throat> you know, back in the day. And only to find out that she herself is a descendant of a slave owner from Jamaica. So <laughs> that's the irony she's smiling about, I bet, right? Uh, Sophia? 
Okay. Anyway, going back to our story. So our Lord, our Lord um, uh, mm, mm, tells us, no, you know, not anymore an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. From now on, anybody who asks you for forgiveness, forgive them 70 times 7 times. In other words, almost infinitely. Just forgive. Forgiveness is a virtue that we should extend towards people who ask us for understanding, patience, and forgiveness. Now, that is a mirror of God's own compassion and mercy towards us. Okay? What Jesus is telling his apostles to do is nothing more but a mirror, a reflection of God's own attitude towards us. If you just recall from the Old Testament, there's so many, 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 many times, almost countless times, when his own people, the Jewish people, turn against God. Right? So many stories, too many to recount in this brief commentary, but there's so many stories of how our Lord uh, uh, showed his own chosen people a great deal of mercy and compassion to the point where uh, some prophets had to beg him, the please, Lord, you know, uh, remember uh, this, remember that, you know, don't, don't uh, carry out your threats uh, towards your people. And our Lord, uh, uh, God himself, rescinded all of the uh, threats he would make to exact justice. So, Jesus is telling us here that we should mirror that mercy of God towards anyone who comes to us sincerely, humbly, and contritely. Okay? Now, let me just uh, uh, parenthetically, let's, uh, let's comment here about the fact that while God is merciful, and He is infinitely merciful. Okay, He will forgive us and forgive anything that we ask pardon for. In fact, He gave His life for that particular purpose, is to forgive our sins. And because of the, because of the wealth of, of that mercy and compassion that we witness on the cross, and that He, that he uh, dramatized to the fullest on the cross... The wealth of forgiveness is available to all of us down to the last person to be born on this earth okay? through <clears throat> the ministry of confession. Right? That is where all the font of uh, uh, forgiveness and grace comes to us. Now, of course, there are also other means by which God forgives us from our sins as long as we sincerely ask for that forgiveness. In fact, during this time of the pandemic, when uh, many times uh, the sacrament of confession is not available as readily to everybody, well, the recommendation that uh, um, I could give and we are being given is that, well, you exercise the, the, um, the practice of asking for forgiveness from our Lord, sincerely, humbly, contritely, like doing a direct confession instead of passing through the sacrament of confession, right? Okay, but that is an extraordinary situation that we're facing now. Okay, but you see, one thing that a lot of people are forgetting and one thing that a lot of priests are not talking about is that while God is infinitely merciful, He is also infinitely just. Okay? People are forgetting the justice of God. Priests are not talking about the justice of God. And that is a very, very big mistake. Okay? Uh, we cannot only picture God as being all merciful and all forgiving and all compassionate and use that as an excuse for our own lack of effort to try to become saints. We use the mercy of God as an excuse. We use the mercy of God as an excuse to justify our own sinful lives. A lot of people justify living a sinful life 
by saying, oh, you know, God understands me. God understands my weaknesses. God understands that, uh, you know, uh, I'm having a tough life and, and he will forgive me. In the end, he's going to forgive me. Well, you know what? That's a sin called? Presumption. presumption, Joseph. Very good. Eh? That's a sin of presumption. That we presume that God is going to have mercy on us. We're forgetting that God, while all merciful and all compassionate and all forgiving, is also all just. And that He is going to deal justice to us if we do not Repent from our sins. Okay? Now, let us, not re let us not forget that forgiveness is tied up to real repentance, to sincere repentance, to uh, humble admission of our own sins and our own defects and our own shortcomings. Okay? Forgiveness is tied up to that. Okay? And our Lord tells us we have to forgive our brothers. Yes, we have to do that. Sometimes that's the most difficult thing to do on earth, right? It's difficult because when you are offended by somebody, you tend to be very defensive. You tend to be putting up a, 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 a wall of of separation between you and the person who offended you. Your pride gets in the way of your forgiveness. And our Lord teaches us, nope, you should set that pride aside and forgive your brothers and sisters many, many, many times, as many times as they come to ask you for forgiveness. So why does it become difficult. Why is it difficult to forgive? The simple answer to that is because many times we are full of our own pride. Pride is the root of lack of forgiveness. Okay? We cannot forgive others because we do not recognize that we ourselves are full of our own miseries. We sometimes forget that we have a broken nature, that we have a tendency to sin, that we ourselves are many times uh, capable of doing the worst crimes that other people commit. We forget that when we are the ones in the receiving end of that uh, offensive uh, dealing by somebody, by our brother, by our sister. When we are the victims, we tend to forget we too are capable of the same crimes. So who are we to be so proud so as not to be able to forgive? Right? So every time somebody offends us and it, we find it difficult to immediately forgive, we have to realize that this is happening because we are not recognizing our own wretchedness. We are being blinded by our own pride towards our own wretchedness, towards our own sinfulness, towards our own defects. Okay? So let us, uh, every time we get tempted this way, tempted not to forgive, we have to stop in our own tracks and really do a sincere examination of conscience and ask ourselves, wait a minute. I too have my own defects. I too have my own sins. Why cannot, can't I find it in myself, in my heart, to forgive this brother, this sister, who is coming to me to ask for forgiveness? I really have no right to deny him or her that forgiveness. So that is the root of what our Lord is telling us here. Okay? We are defective, we are wretched, we are sinful, and we are recipients ourselves of the great forgiveness of God Himself by His own death on the cross. We are recipients of that. So why can we not 
impart that to others who have offended us. In the same manner that this, this uh, story in today's gospel tells us how that servant should have forgiven his fellow servant because he himself, the first servant, was also a recipient of forgiveness from the king. Okay? So let us, let's not imitate the example of this servant. Rather, let us emulate the example of Jesus Christ who does not tire to forgive us every time we go and ask since humbly, sincerely, and contritely for forgiveness for our own sins. Okay? Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Hope to see you again tomorrow about 7 o'clock here in, uh, in uh, the west coast of the United States as the Kleochikos wrap up breakfast and we do this commentary every morning. Uh, so you're all welcome to join us if you are available. We'll see you again tomorrow, hopefully. Bye for now. Have a good day.